wonderful world of Disney. It's ten after six, Mr. Whitfield. It's time. If you'll just allow me five more minutes. I'm sorry, but the race was set to go at six o'clock. Now, Professor Lowe knew that. He'll be here, I assure you. I'm afraid there won't be time. It's going to get dark soon, and the storm is moving in in our direction. Now, Mr. Forrest is ready to ascend, and I'm going to let him go. Yeah, come on. Get out. Come on. Any sign of him? No. I drove all the way back to the ferry. O'Neill wasn't there either. What happened to it? It's gone. Somebody cut the cable. Somebody what? No, 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 gentlemen. Thaddeus Lowe is a good friend of mine. I would not say that he was afraid to show up. Exactly. No, no, he'll, he'll arrive here with some good excuse yet. But there's never been any doubt as to who's going to collect that prize money. Mr. Forrest, sir, you may take off now. No hurry, Judge, no hurry at all. Look at it, gentlemen. The finest aircraft ever built by man. 50 feet wide, 60 feet tall, made of the most beautiful silk available and filled with 30,000 cubic feet of pure hydrogen. Uh, how much weight can she lift, Professor? Why, she could lift an elephant, sir, if I tied one on. <laughs> <laughs> and don't call me, Professor. No, sir. Make it plain and simple, just plain and simple, John J. Forrest of Kentucky. World famous, are you not? Uh, yeah, put the champagne in the corner there, Jasper. Any other questions, gentlemen? Uh, how many days you think the flight will take? Days? Why, she'll be in Washington, D.C. by sunrise tomorrow. You figure to travel 400 miles in one night? I do. With the help of a good lord and a strong wind, I shall fly from Cincinnati, Ohio, to Washington, D.C. in 12 hours. Uh, excuse me. Uh, the wind is blowing west. Mr. Forrest, how do you expect to fly east? Down here, it's blowing west. Up there, 8,000 feet above the earth, there is a wind that flows like a great easterly river in the sky. One day, I shall be the first man on earth to ride that great river of wind across the Atlantic Ocean to Europe. And I'll do it alone. I don't need a navigating seaman with me. All I'll do is follow the stars. Ready, Judge. All right, ladies and gentlemen, stand back, please. Let's stand clear. Judge, wait a minute. Ready to cast off. Who wants to come along? Better not let that wind take you south. You heard what those Rebs did to Fort Sumter last week. There's no such thing as boundaries in heaven, sir. And I have no interest in politics. The winds are free to anyone who can capture them. And that's all I care about. I tell you, there's been foul play. Not here, there hasn't. It looks like the Cincinnati Inquirer backed the wrong balloon, Mr. Whitfield, you old buzzard! You <laughs> scoundrel! <laughs> you can't prove he had anything to do with it. But somebody cut that ferry loose. It could have been an accident. Accident, my foot. That jack-o'-lantern would drown his own mother for $2,000 in prize money. All right, bravo. Well, I told that it wasn't no time to go making dinner speeches. He'll get a key to the city, and Forrest will get to build his Atlantic flyer. Here he comes. Hey, it's low. What's happened to you, Thad? I'll explain later, Jim. We've got to go. Move that buggy back. Pan and cast off. I tried to stop him. There's your coat. Oh, no time to change now. We have to beat that storm. All right, W ballast. Do you think Force fouled you, Professor? Of course he did. He'll do what he can to win, gentlemen. And so will I. Cast off. All right, everybody, stand back. Good luck, Fab, and Godspeed. We'll see you in Washington, Jim. What are these for, Ballast? Special edition. I never had one airmail. I hope you don't mind. 
We'll drop them on the White House steps for you. Good luck, good Hello. luck. Have a good trip. You think he'll catch up? I think he'll win it. And furthermore, gentlemen, I expect Thaddeus Lowe to use that prize money to be the first man in history to fly across the ocean. Wire, sir. My gosh. What is it? Virginia has seceded. They've seized the arsenal at Harpers Ferry. Lincoln's called out the militia and ordered a blockade from South Carolina to Texas. We got ourselves a war. Ooh. And they're flying right into it. Civil war. Fighting. South Carolina seceded. Aren't they beautiful? Forty-three years of merchant seamen in it. I never seen stars any prettier. Or closer. How high are we? We uh, see we're fourteen thousand feet and still on course. Hey, look, Rob. You see that range out there? That's the Alleghenies. We're over Western Virginia already? Well, we must be. And it's only half past two. That storm has pushed us 40 minutes ahead of schedule. Well, I'll be. You think he's still ahead of us? Not unless he's caught the same winds. And his balloon can't fly this high. <laughs> We've made it. We've made it. We've done it. We've got that blowfish bait for sure. <laughs> We must be averaging 70 knots. But with winds like this, we could, we could be in Washington by dawn. Just don't hardly seem possible. Well, as long as we can stay above the storm, I don't see anything out there to stop us. I don't know where we are, Thad. That could be Maryland or Virginia. I'm not sure either. Let's drop down and find out. for Yanks. Ain't no Yanks out there. We'll be when we can cross. How are we gonna do that? They'll see us. Not tonight, they won't. Oh, Davy, we can't stay here until night. It's too dangerous. We got to. Look, when it gets dark, we'll put mud on our faces so nothing shines. My pa learned that in Indian fights. Don't lie, listen to you. You're only 13 and you don't know any more about soldiering than I do. You don't gotta come if you don't want it, Johnny. I'm coming. I mean, I wouldn't blame you none if you was to go back home. I ain't going back. I run away to join the Union Army just like you did. That's what I'm gonna do. I just didn't figure on dying for my country so soon. Nobody's gonna die, Johnny. Yeah. Well, I still say we should have gone round Virginia instead of across it. We'd be two more weeks traveling. What could be over by then? Yeah, I know. Jeb, look. Uh, up there. Hold it, Moses. What do you think it is? I don't right to know. You think we better report it? You bet your life. Sergeant! Sergeant! Hey, what's going on? I don't know. Come on. Uh, 
coming down awful low, awful fast, ain't we? Sure. Yeah, I'm all right. But we just lost a race, didn't we? Yeah, well, let's just not lose this balloon. Don't you move, not one little bit, Yank. Do this. Them there's my prisoners. No more, they ain't. They belong to Army now. Captain Brown gets here. I'm gonna give them to him. Okay, inside, come on. Dag better he didn't catch him, I did. Well, maybe so. Go on now. Nah, I should have hung. Let's take that, that, that home guard of yours with you. I tell you, we know nothing about the war. Sure, sure. Now, Sheriff, if you just read the newspaper I gave you, it'll explain everything. I did. <laughs> Cincinnati Observer. The abolitionist paper. Go on, now get in there. Quit your arguing. You too. As far as I'm concerned. He could be faking like that other fella. Says he's no blue belly. I know he's lying. <laughs> Welcome to the spy club. <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> the same as you, a victim of unkindly circumstances. It's delightful to see you again, Thaddeus. It is, yes. You too, you old sea barnacle. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I, I mean it. It is. Why, well, it means, of course, you didn't win the race either. You double-crossing pirate. You cheated on it. <laughs> Cut that ferry loose so we couldn't win. Oh, is that what happened to you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, actually, you're right. Yes, I did do that, and it was a rather dirty trick. I, I've been worried about it ever since. I, I swear, I don't know what gets into me. Greed. That is a failing of mine. Yes, I'll have to work to improve on that. But what happened to you? Did they shoot you down? Frozen valve. Frozen valve, I knew I had you licked. I knew it. I tell you, the oceanic flew like a bird all the way. Well, uh, what are you doing here? Resting? No. Um, well, I was following the Potomac River this morning, right on course, when suddenly it disappeared from view. Fog. Well, I flew blindly for a while, and suddenly up ahead I saw some lights, so I decided to drop down to find out where I was, you know? Two Johnny Rebs yanked me right out of the basket. And then they stood back and threw some torches. And they destroyed the finest balloon I ever owned. Well, I managed to get a hold of a gun from one of the soldiers, and I escaped into the trees. I waited there for two hours, not knowing what was happening. Suddenly, I heard them. They were coming from all directions. They must have had the whole county out after me. And I put up a pretty good fight of my own, I'll tell you that. <laughs> What'd you do, kill somebody? Uh, no, 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 of course not, no. Well, I did manage to wing one old gentleman who was shooting at me. He was actually trying to kill me. It's most offensive. Pure self-defense. I don't think they look at it that way. No, I'm afraid not. I mean, no, I don't. Everything all right? Oh, it's been nice and quiet since uh, Mr. Clemens and that crowd of his took off. Mm. Shut the door, will you? Wait over there. Mm. Uh, what did Captain Brown say? He said Union Army walks on land just as we do. Mm. Huh? He, he told me to let him go. But it 
don't seem right to do that. They is Yankees, ain't they? It, they could be spies. Now, Captain Brown tells me that uh, you're harmless. He says that uh, you're some kind of famous scientist or something. Is that right? Oh, just a couple of innocent aeronauts, Sheriff. It was an accident, a mere whim of the winds that brought us here. Well, you sure picked a bad time to be flying cross country. Yeah. I'm aware of that now, sir. It won't happen again. Well, there's a couple of soldiers outside just to see you safely back to the border bridge. You're free to go. Oh, thank you, sir. I still say they could be spies. Well, we, uh, we won't be back to bother you, Sheriff. You ain't going anywhere. What did you say? Well, what, what do you mean? I'm the same as he is. I, I haven't got, got anything to do with this stupid war. I can vouch for him, Sheriff. Let him go. Yeah. There's nothing I can do for him. It's, um, civil matter. Civil matter? That fella you wounded? Yeah. First cousin to the judge. I hear they're gonna give you a trial tomorrow. If you don't get hung, well, you're gonna be in prison a long, long time. Let's go. Uh, but, 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 but one moment, sir. I mean, there are a certain, what do you call those? The amendments to the Constitution of the United States of America, sir. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just one minute. Are you... There are balloons out around the side. You know, the Army even give you a wagon. <laughs> hey, Zeke, show them where the horses is at, will you? Yes, yeah, sir. <clears throat> well, thank you, Sheriff. Just hold it right there, soldier boy. Just hang on. I want you to sign me a release form. Since I ain't in the Army, I mean to keep myself protected. Hey, you can write, can't you? Fine. What's the matter? Nothing, nothing. Uh, help with the horses, huh? Yeah, go on. I gotta look after the balloon. <laughs> Puts him to sleep. He wouldn't risk his neck to save us. Uh, get out of the way.
something to do. I could have been killed. He could have been killed. Nothing changes, Rob. Nothing changes. Well, come on up, Jack, and join the party. Well, at least we're crossing the border. Whee! That was some ride, Professor. Yeah, I'm glad to see you still know how to run from trouble. <laughs> I should. We've done enough of it. <laughs> About every other Sunday. <laughs> Uh, remember that first balloon we had together? Oh, Leaky? Yeah, oh, yeah. Leaky. Uh, first time we took her up, we got about 10 feet off the ground, the whole thing collapsed right on the town council. They tore the basket to shreds, remember? Well, that's when I learned to keep a wagon handy. Thad, why don't we stop competing? Hmm? I mean, we both want to be the first ones to fly the Atlantic, right? Hmm? Well, why don't we do it together? I mean, we could join forces and pool our resources, or we could finance the whole thing by this summer. You and me together again, huh? Okay. Right. Never. Anyway, we got a war to worry about now. What's the war got to do with it? When we get to Washington, I'm gonna volunteer my services. I'd hope you'd do the same. Me? Volunteer? Me? Oh, not a chance. No. No. <laughs> Jack? You know what military value our balloons can have. What do I care about that? I mean, war is for idiots and generals. We're explorers, we're not soldiers. We're also citizens. Then what's happened to you anyway, Thad? Low, the Patriot? All right, so I believe in the Union. I also believe that we need government support if we're gonna make any real progress in flight. We gotta prove to them that we're useful. We gotta show them that we're just not Sunday entertainers. All right, that. All right, you go on ahead and throw your life away if you want to, but not me. Me? I'm going to New York, I'm gonna raise me some money, and I'm gonna fly the Atlantic this summer. Rob? I signed on for the full voyage, so I'll stay with the ship. Come on, buddy. What are you gonna do? Stay here for a while. I got a job this morning. I really appreciate you coming to see me off. I'm sorry, Davy. You would have made a fine soldier. You really would have. All right, get in line. Come on, get in line. I can't Let's take go. it, Davy. You're, you're, you're just go. too young. Boy, you're in this group, aren't you? Yes, sir. Well, get in line. Bye, Davy. Look, Johnny. I'll get you a rib. Come on, boy, let's go, let's go. All right, quiet down now. Attention! Now, we got wagons outside. But we're gonna march to them like soldiers. Left face! Forward, march! Come on, move along, let's go. All right, I'll take some of you volunteers over here. Name? My name is David Stevens. I'm 18, and I freely volunteer to fight for my country. Stevens, David, where were you born? Western Virginia, near Georgetown. Next of kin? My father. He was a professional soldier. He fought and died for the Union Army. You got any living relatives? My mom and my two sisters. And why don't you go back to them and stop bothering us? Told you before, you're too young. Please, Sergeant. I just gotta join. I'm strong, really, and I can shoot and scout. I even know how to send and read telegraph messages if you want. Well, now, I didn't know that. Did you, Corporal? Nope. Yes, sir. I could be very valuable. Hmm. Boy, we might just need something like you one of these days. You know, uh, for a special mission, saving lives or something. That's me. When we do, we'll let you know. I work just down the road at the Western Union office. Good. Now, you stay there now, you hear? Because when we need you, you'll be notified. Gee, thanks. 
Balloons have been used as observation platforms since the French Revolution. Well, I told General McClellan that, but he refused to listen. He, he feels it's some sort of circus stunt. Well, what about the president? Oh, I tried for three days, Thad. It's tough to get his attention. We could fly over the White House and drop a shell. That ought to do it. <laughs> no, no, we know what we have to do. We'll just have to show them. Is there anything else? Yes. You. Me? I specifically requested a volunteer. Well, I don't know anything about that. Well, obviously, I'm going to need an operator. Now, look, this is urgent. Perhaps the most important mission of the whole war. I assure you that many lives depend on its success. I was promised a man. Now, where is he? Uh, I really couldn't say. I could do it. You. Yes, sir. I can send and receive as good as anybody. Well, uh, he may be a little small, perhaps, but uh, he's quite capable. You're not afraid of altitudes now, are you? Altitudes? Heights. Oh, no, sir. I'm not afraid of anything. <laughs> Holy smoke. You all right, son? Yes, sir. Get ready to take a message. Ready, sir. To the President of the United States. Now just send what I tell you. Sir, I have the pleasure of sending the first telegraph message ever dispatched from an aerial observation platform. At this moment, I command a visual sighting of all the territory surrounding Washington more than 50 miles in diameter. I could, if you desire, draw a map of all the troop installations before me, including Union and Confederate forces. It is my hope to demonstrate how the science of aeronautics can benefit and serve our country in time of need, war as in peace. Uncle Bill. He was the chief operator there for the Western Union. I was his apprentice, up until Mom bought that farm. I don't like farming that much. I'd rather be a soldier. You really a sea captain? Told you were, didn't I? Yeah, but never saw one flying a balloon before. <laughs> that ain't surprising. Not many of them that foolish. You know what boredom is, boy? It's what you call retirement, and that's what you give me after 30 years running my own ship. A uh, man wasn't made to sit and vegetate. So when I heard the professor was planning an ocean trip and needed a good hand, I jumped at it. Tell you one thing, he don't care how old a man is as long as he does his work. Uh, he gave me a second life, young Thad did. All right, let's go. You four men, grab those ropes. Hitch up the horses and hurry it up now. We're going to be moving out. Uh, what's all of this? The beginning of the Ananata Corps, the United States Army. That's right. Lincoln approved, gave Thad his own detachment. Horses, wagons, anything he wants. And he's been ordered to the front as chief aeronaut with the Army of the Potomac. We've been assigned to the topographical engineers. They couldn't figure where else to put us. <laughs> that sounds pretty fancy. They make you general, too? Well, no, they didn't. I get paid as a civilian employee, without rank. Yes, the generals insisted upon that. They can't do that. If you get caught working for the Yanks, your Reb's got every right to hang you. And any other civilian that catch along with me. You sure don't make it easy on the help. Now, Captain, there's no reason you have to go. No reason? Who's going to help him fly that thing? Them? They don't know anything about ballooning. I tell you, if you didn't need me so bad, I'd stay right here. But you got me tied to the mast, and you know it. I guess we got no choice. None of us. You do. You're going right back home where you belong. But I just got to serve my country somehow. 
Well, you will, Davy. When you get old enough, you'll realize you don't have to be a soldier to serve your country. Please, sir. No, I'm sorry, Davy. We certainly appreciate all the help you've given us. Now, you take care of yourself. All right, let's move it along. Good luck, Thad. I thought you said he didn't care how old anybody was. I'm Lieutenant Thomas, Chief of Topography. I was told you'd be ready to go up over an hour ago. You're lucky we even here. One thing a balloon ain't supposed to be is walk across country. Well, I don't know anything about that. What do you know about, Lieutenant? <laughs> Maps. Rob, get that range finder. Then we'll get this balloon up. Yes, sir. And just a minute, Professor. Look, Lieutenant, I'm not here to fight you. I'm here to do a job. So am I. Well, maybe we should get along. Maybe we should. These could be of some use to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, you little stowaway. Come on out of there now. Come on. Tell the Red Wing an attack all through these woods. Now, I want you to tell me whatever you see, Professor. We'll do just that. Hey, Dad, look what I got. Hmm. Well, what's he doing here? Ask him. Here. I thought I told you to go home. Yes, I know. But I didn't. What are we going to do with him? I don't know. We'll have to work that out later on. Just keep an eye on him. Stand by the winch. Sure. Get ready to cast off. You all set? Yep. Let her go. You look at that. What them Yankees up to now? Calvin, look. Well, it's over. 
She's mine, Sergeant. No, I got her. I got her. He ought to be safe there. I'll break him, but you have to take it slow and easy so it won't snap the rope. <laughs> now they can fire all day if they want to. They won't hit anything. A couple hundred feet sure is bad, though. Yeah, it's the same way coming down. Artillery at him. You think we ought to bring him down? They can't hit him at that altitude. Let's get out of here. They spotted us. No, Colonel. They're not firing at us. Look, they're firing at them. Why don't they hit that thing and get it over with? Sir, that's our balloon. So what? They're drawing fire down on us, ain't they? Yeah, the dumb stunts. Lieutenant, you take the men back. I'm going to find out who's in charge and flag tag all heavies hide. Yes, sir. All right, man, let's go. Woo. I've assigned Professor Lowe to your unit. And that's where he goes. What do I need a balloon for? You don't, nor do I. I have the Pinkerton Agency to supply me with military intelligence, but the president believes Professor Lowe can be useful, so we use him. If he gets to be a nuisance, I'll get rid of him. Otherwise, he's your problem. Handle it as you see fit. Bring him in. Come in, Professor. You no, know, I don't expect him to be friendly. I only expect him to give me an honest trial. Just remember, don't make him angry. Yeah. yeah. Professor Lowe, so glad to have you with us. Sorry we couldn't get together in Washington. General McClellan. I was just telling Colonel Porter here, we need brave men like you. I'm sure that your reports will be of great benefit to us in time. Right? Yes, sir. Lieutenant Thomas, I've assigned Professor Lowe to Porter's sector. Now you see to it, he gets everything he needs. Yes, sir. Sir, I've asked the military telegraph service for wire and an operator. So far, they've done nothing but delay. You'll get them in the morning. Anything else? No. You all packed? Yep. You're sure you got everything you need? Yep. Yeah. Told Davy he was going back tomorrow. I told him he couldn't find anybody as good as I am. Probably get it some old guy that weighs 500 pounds and can't even fit in the basket. Get him up there. He'll faint right on you. Have a heart attack or something. He'll probably fall out of the thing. Come flying down, splashing all over the ground. You're still going home, Davy. I'm going back, but I'm not going home. I'll go to New York or New Jersey or something. I'll find somebody that'll let me be a soldier like I wanted to be in the first place. I'm gonna go out and make sure the balloon's secured. What you reading? Book on ballooning. He gave me it as a keepsake. Thought I might be interested. would think a thing like that.
I'm the new telegraph operator. Can you tell me where I can find this, uh, Mr. Mr. Lowe? Yes, sir. He's up there. Up? Up where? You don't know? All I know is they drug me out of my bed at 2 o'clock this morning to come here. Well, where's he at? Come on, I'll show you. You sure must be brave. I mean, being a civilian and all, you don't got to do this kind of work. Oh, I'm used to all kinds of things. That's him up in the basket. Well, you'll be. I mean, he's been acting kind of funny lately, since that last fella got shot. Through the head. Awful thing that was. Now, those last three operators we lost, well, that was different. They just panicked. That's why we put that iron plate on the bottom. Keeps the basket from not tipping. We don't want to lose anybody else like those last four fellows. I'm splashing down like... Hey, what's the matter, mister? Hey, where are you going? Not up there, I ain't. I ain't going up there. I'm not going up there. Now, when he throws down the line, grab the end of it, run it through the pulley like I showed you, and be quick about it, and stand by and be ready. And when I say go, you go. We ought to get him down under 10 seconds this time. Stand by at the winch. You ready? Here it comes. <laughs> Just hurry up now. Take the end of that rope. Cut it through the block. Get it straight, get it straight so it won't tangle now. Go! 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 Hurry up! Well, it sure did. Yeah, I'm happy about that. Hello? Yeah. Get this balloon ready to go up right away. What's going on? The Rebs are moving up all kinds of reinforcements. McClellan's got Pinkerton and his boys out there trying to find what's going on. But I told him that you could do it faster by going up and telegraphing what you see. Well, where's your operator? He's supposed to be here. Well, he was, only I think he quit. Quit? Yes, sir. I was talking to him, explaining his duties and things, and he just ran off. Skate as a rabbit. You were explaining his duties, huh? Now what are we gonna do? He left his key in the water. I could take his place. You? He's a good operator. And the only one around. Hmm. Go get what you need. Get me! Choice. Sure. Yeah. Make sure you see part two of the High Flying Spy next Sunday night on the wonderful world of Disney. Don't go away because coming up next is the hard hitting public affairs program 60 Minutes. And then we take you to Calgary, Canada for more breathtaking Winter Olympics. Tonight, a chance for you to see the bobsleigh, more spectacular ski jumping, figure skating, biathlon, and much, much more. So stay.